Hey everyone, welcome back. I have settled in here for a few minutes with a hot cup of tea on a chilly winter afternoon. That's the uh, steam you see here in the video. Yesterday I debuted uh, a new semiconductor industry flowchart that we've been working on for a while now. Um, it's very simple at this point. We are going to work at improving it, making it more clear and easy to read. It's the culmination of a few weeks of work. So we were excited to get it out and hope that it's helpful in your increasing your understanding of the semiconductor space, but it probably needs a bit of explanation on how to use it and what it all means. So I promised that in the last video on synopsis and cadence. I've also promised to make a video on how I choose semiconductor companies to invest in. That's not an easy question to answer, but I'm going to try to break it down and maybe just give a general overview of how I select stocks to add to my portfolio overall. Before continuing, so, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology, we really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. I'll first start by explaining the general framework that I use for selecting stocks is known as a top-down research method. Basically what it is, I'm starting from a macro economic point of view and looking for where money is moving, where money is being invested within the global economy. So looking for big mega trends that should last many years, if not more than a decade. So one of those mega trends within the economy has been semiconductors. The semiconductor industry, at least you know what we know as is the modern chip, was invented actually more than 70 years ago, still going strong, technical innovation still happening at a rapid pace. It's a mega trend that doesn't just support computing technology, but one that supports uh, really at this point an inflection point where chips are proliferating throughout the entire economy. And we're not just talking about an army of white collar workers in an office somewhere doing some clerical work, but deeply embedded, embedding chips and computing systems into the very fabric of operations. So we're reaching this inflection point here where you know it might be a healthcare company or a healthcare provider putting connectivity chips in devices in their hospitals and their surgery centers. It might be an energy company using sensors to monitor their equipment. Automotive companies gobbling up tons of chips to support electrification, advanced driver assist systems, and so on. Which brings us to this industry specific flowchart, our semiconductor industry flowchart, which we made to illustrate how chip production happens, uh, how the different steps in the process of developing a chip happens, how the different companies relate to each other, how they interact with each other, and ultimately how money flows through the semiconductor industry, which will help you decide which stocks you want to invest in. So let me break it down here. I'll start from the top where you see the, the orange arrows flowing from the left to the right into electronic design automation or EDA software, as well as chip patents. So we just did the deep dive just the other day on Cadence Design and Synopsys. Those are two of the three companies that make up the oligopoly uh, in EDA software. You can think of it as like CAD, computer-aided design, but for chips. Uh, chip patents closely related to it. Both of those companies dabble in chip patenting. Uh, so does ARM, the company that is about to have an IPO at some point in 2023. So those companies, EDA and chip patenting, flow into the companies below it the IDMs, integrated device manufacturers, that would be like an Intel or a Texas Instruments. They design their own chips and they also manufacture their own chips for themselves that they then sell to their customers. Sometimes IDMs uh, and definitely always fabulous chip designers on use chip fabricators. 
So this would be like a Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing or a global foundries. And then the fabulous designers, of course, this section gets a ton of attention because companies like Nvidia and AMD are fabulous. They only design chips. They dabble in software. You can think of them basically as big giant engineering and technological research companies. Coming at it from the other angle here, also flowing into the IDMs, chip fabs, and the fabless chip designers, you have base materials and gases. So that could be a company like Rizonac in Japan that helps supply base materials. Um, it could be an Air Products or a Lindy that provide uh, gases that are used in the manufacturing of chips. Closely related to that, I have it broken down into a separate segment for now, specialty energy equipment, service and design. We can make the case for lumping this in with base materials and gases, but for now it's separate. I have a company called Advanced Energy, ticker symbol AEIS filed under here. Uh, other companies like ABB or MKS Instruments, there, there are others. We have not done any videos on these yet. Stay tuned for that. But closely, closely related to base materials and gases, basically companies that provide the basic raw materials and equipment needed for IDMs and the chip fabs. That also flows over into the wafer fab equipment. This is another special spot on the flow chart, kind of like EDA and chip patents where there's an oligopoly. So wafer fab equipment, those are companies like ASML Holding, Applied Materials, LAM Research, KLA Core, and so on. The companies that make the actual equipment needed to manufacture chips. Then at the end of this, you have the users of the final product, the users of the chips themselves, tech equipment and devices. This could be any number, any number of companies that you could stick in here. It could be an automaker. It could be Apple that uses chips to uh, assemble its iPhones. And then of course, some of those companies are also maybe computing system equipment manufacturers that maybe design and build servers uh, and other communications equipment that flow into data centers, internet service providers, and the like. All of this ultimately flows back into the software space because that is the point of the semiconductor industry. It enables software and services that used by consumers, people like you and I, also businesses. And then it starts this virtuous cycle where the software flows back into the industry at different points and helps fuel the continuous design and innovation of newer and more efficient chips. Next question, how do I use this chart to select semiconductor stocks that I stick in my portfolio? Well, there's, there's two basic categories uh, of companies that I'm looking for. The first is a company that has some sort of technological leadership over its peers. And these are kind of those high growth, sexy names that I think get all of the attention. So fabulous chip designers like Nvidia and AMD, they have a clear cut lead. They're pioneering new markets for semiconductors or they're eating up market share of an, of an existing segment of the chip industry. Or it might be a chip fab like Taiwan Semi, clear leadership there in their manufacturing processes far and away more advanced than what Samsung and Intel can do at the moment, or maybe an IDM like a Texas Instruments there on the left. That's kind of the first thing I'm looking for is a company that has this clear cut leadership. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. The second doesn't get as much attention, but one of the reasons why we started this research channel was to shine a light on some of these companies that harbor these special points in this flowchart where there's maybe an oligopoly or maybe even a single company 
that completely controls their section of the flow of the industry. So one of them is EDA. They're at the top, Electronic Design Automation. Three companies, uh, again, we'll throw the link up to the video that we just did the other day on Synopsys, Cadence Design Systems, and Mentor, which is now a subsidiary of uh, Germany's Siemens. It's an oligopoly. EDA software, absolutely critical to the whole industry because companies use that software to design the chips, to sign off and verify the chips are ready for production, to make sure that the software is running properly. Once the chips are made and operating the software, that's a choke point in this flowchart where large amounts of money and the actual production of the chip, be it at the beginning stages of design or in final production, the industry flows through that segment of the flow chart. So I have a special interest in areas of an industry like that. Uh, a second one where this happens is like, again, like I mentioned just a moment ago, wafer fab equipment and chip fab equipment. It's an oligopoly. There's only a handful of companies that control the fab equipment segment of the industry. Really, there's there's five mega companies. One of them is, at the moment, a complete monopoly, ASML holding, only company that produces extreme ultraviolet lithography equipment. And then some of the others in there, there's only two or three, maybe three companies that manufacture certain types of equipment. So like, for example, applied materials and LAM research, you could view as kind of a duopoly for various types of advanced chip manufacturing equipment. KLA core uh, is the major player in metrology and inspection, basically quality control of chip manufacturing and so on. So this is another choke point in the industry flow chart that I give special attention to, they are not the highest growth companies, but because there's only a handful of businesses that control these segments of the industry flow, they have very high profit margins, even in a cyclical downturn, like we're currently in the midst of here at the beginning of 2023, they might still be able to crank out a little bit of revenue growth. They're still highly profitable. And they can use that cash to continue to reward their shareholders with dividends and stock repurchases. So those are the two basic categories I'm looking for. Technical, technological leadership and companies that control certain choke points within the industry. Now, there are other little interesting spots on this map here that I give attention to. There are companies that might harbor a very specific niche within the industry flow and going forward. When there's a company that meets that criteria, I will make sure to refer to this and point it out to you and why I think that company harbors a, a very special spot in the industry, uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean it has a, an extremely large technological lead and it may not be part of an oligopoly, but if there's a company that has some special secret sauce, I'll, I'll show you where it is. Uh, a company, for example, uh, that we can point to that we recently did an update on is Fortinet, a cybersecurity company that also designs its own chips. The company dabbles basically, you could say, in the fabulous chip design space. It, it probably uses some chip patents that it licenses from, from a company that owns, owns those companies and pays royalties and uses EDA software for sure. That's a secret ingredient that Fortinet is using the chip industry for to uh, enhance its own operations in the cybersecurity space. Just as, as, as an example of a company um, that I might look for that's outside of some sort of technological leadership or some sort of special oligopoly situation. That will do it for today. I hope this update was helpful. Please use this flowchart, uh, feel free 
to reference it as you're doing your own research on the semiconductor industry. And, and I hope my explanation of how I pick semiconductor stocks was helpful. Do bear in mind, this is not the same process I use for every industry I invest in, invest in a lot of other places outside of semiconductors, but the semiconductor industry is very, very unique. And so there's some special situations in there that I think allow for this particular process to be used. Hit us up with questions that you might have. And uh, again, thank you for tuning in and hope this was helpful. Music